Hi, uh, good morning everybody. So, today uh, we have come to our fourth uh, lecture on uh, rate processes. So, uh, we were discussing the effect of temperature on reaction rates. Okay. So, we will uh, continue to this that is we will uh, give a little uh, detailed uh, account on this. So, um, let us start. So, uh, with respect to reaction condition, temperature is a very important factor that controls the chemical reaction. Okay. Apart from temperature, pressure, concentration, catalyst, solvent, these are also important, but temperature uh, um, is also a very important parameter. Uh, and uh, uh, that uh, if we change uh, temperature, you know, reaction rate is found to get affected. And if you increase the temperature, generally what is what happens is uh, reaction rate increases. You don't ever find that the reaction rate is decreased. Okay. Um, so uh, it has been observed that in uh, means it is basically a recapitulation of uh, some parts we already have talked about. Uh, it has been observed that in homogeneous thermal reactions, thermal reaction means the reactions which uh, occur just by applying heat from outside. Homogeneous means it happens in one phase, okay? not in two phases or multi phases. Homogene for th homogeneous thermal reactions for every 10 degree rise in temperature, the rate constant is doubled or even tripled. Uh, the ratio of rate constants at two different temperatures separated by 10 degree centigrade is called the temperature coefficient of, uh, of the reaction. And mathematically this temperature coefficient is nothing but you know K at T plus 10 by K T and this is found to be of the it means close to 2 to 3 okay? and this is for uh, homogeneous thermal reactions, homogeneous thermal reactions. Other in other cases something else may happen with respect to K T plus 10 by K T. Okay. So, the first mathematical relation between rate constant and absolute temperature was given by in 1878 as as follows that is ln k is equal to a minus b by t. You see that it is an empirical relation that says that if you plot you know as I told you as I talked about in, um, in previous lecture that ln k versus 1 upon t will be giving you a linear slope. So, here also you know this is a similar relation and it is it is prior to it is before you know Arrhenius uh, proposed his equation his famous equation. So, A and B these are constant quantities for a reaction system. The values of A and B these may be obtained by plotting L and K versus 1 upon T that is from slope you will be getting B and from intercept you will be getting A. Now, this Hood's equation, this equation was based on the experimental result that is from the experience that uh, means uh, whatever uh, data or whatever results people have gathered out of uh, various chemical processes that is found to fit in this equation. So, it is basically based on experimental results that is based on experience. So, some theoretical significance to this equation was given by Van in 1884 on the basis of the effect of temperature on equilibrium constant. So, Van tried to give some idea why this happens. Okay? On the basis of you know um, effect of temperature on chemical equilibrium constant. So, in equilibrium constants are very sensitive to temperature. So, if you change the temperature equilibrium constant 
will also change. So, based on that since equilibrium constants are affected, so he tried to explain on the basis of this observation. This idea was further extended by Arrhenius in his attempt to obtain the relation between rate constant and temperature. The relation obtained was then successfully applied by him to the effect of temperature data for a number of reactions, for a number of chemical processes and the equation is usually called the Arrhenius equation which is you know ln k is equal to A into exponential I mean it is not ln k, k is equal to A into exponential minus E A by R T. So, if you take ln ln k is equal to ln A minus E A by R T. So, this these two are very similar. So, this A is similar to ln A and this this one is similar to this. Okay. So, um, actually uh, uh, Arrhenius from the idea of Hood's equation, he gave this new expression that is k is equal to a into e to the power minus x a by r t and that has been found to fit very well with chemical systems when temperature is modified. So, uh, Arrhenius equation a uh, consider a general reaction that a is converted to B and say you know energy of A is E A and energy of B is E B. So, like this A to B. So, it is K 1 reverse is K minus 1 and energy is E A this is E B. Okay. So, concentration equilibrium constant which is k 1 by k minus 1. So, what Van Tuff tried to explain is like this based on his idea on effect of temperature on equilibrium constant that uh, d d t of l n k c is equal to delta E by R t square where delta E is nothing but E B minus E A that is final minus initial that is the energy change associated with this process of transformation from A to B. So, it is it is uh, merely the energy change associated with this chemical transformation. Okay. So, he tried to use this expression and with the idea that a with E A, B with E B. So, the difference in energy will be E B minus E A and, and then he, he has you know plugged in this value to this one, to this expression. Okay. So, if we, if we write, I mean, I mean if we plug in this onto here, then what do we get? D D T of L N k 1 by k minus 1 which is equal to delta E. Delta E means basically E B minus E A by R T square. Okay. So, if we split this, so basically delta E is nothing but E B minus E A. Okay. I either you can write delta E or maybe E B minus E A in this way. I am just uh, uh, writing this together means uh, this this one is nothing but this one delta E means this one. So, if we now split this expression into two equations, then this will look like d d t of L n k 1 that is rate constant for the forward process. Okay. So, basically we started with this A to B forward rate and backward rate. So, d d t of ln k 1 is equal to E A by 
r t square plus some constant z. This is the first equation. The second equation is d d t of ln k minus 1 is equal to E b by r t square plus z. So, for any general reaction, any general reaction, what do you get? Suppose we have a general reaction like A to product with a rate constant k with energy E, then we, we write using this uh, Arrhenius equation d d t of ln k is equal to E by R t square plus z. So, basically this has the form this particular in a general form. So, this has the form like k is equal to a into exponential minus e by r t square. This has the form not exactly the you know this is not the uh, exactly the energy of activation, but this has the form that rate constant has got some pre exponential term and within exponential there must be an energy term sorry this is r t there must be uh, an energy term within this exponential. Okay. So, this way this uh, Arrhenius equation arrived into. Now, again uh, what is this E or for your Arrhenius equation k is equal to a into exponential to the power minus E a by R t. So, what is this E a? Let us refer to uh, this slide that this is the slide let us look into that that uh, this is your reactant initial state it is a starting point point of your reaction. Okay. Then what happens an activated state is formed which may be called as an activated complex and then this activated complex or activated state is transformed to product. Okay. So, it is now then transformed to this product. Okay. So, the difference in energy state between the reactant that is the initial state and the activated complex is called the activation energy for the forward process. So, this is a reactant or initial state, this is your activated state and say this is your product state, say this is your products that is your final. Okay. So, difference in energy of these two. Okay, difference in energy of these two, it is called the activation energy for transformation from reactant to activated state. So, like this, so it is the forward process, forward activation energy. In the same way, this difference is the difference between the activated state and the product state and uh, basically if you draw an arrow like this, so it is for the backward or reverse process. So, it is called the activation energy for the reverse process. So, this is forward activation process I mean forward activation energy and this is your reverse activation energy. Okay. And you see here we I have drawn the reactant state and the product state in such a way that product is above reactant state. Okay. So, that means what is happening that uh, moving from here to here your energy state of the um, I mean whole energy of the system is increasing is increasing. So, that means it is energy extracting that is energy is taken up from outside. So, it is not energy generating it is not an exothermic process. Suppose if your product state is here then your it is lower in energy so it is if primed it is lower in energy compared to a reactant. So, that means this much of energy would have been 
released. So, therefore, this process would have been an exothermic process. And so, difference between these two either this or maybe these two pairs, it is called the you know heat of reaction that is the energy I mean enthalpy difference between this and that. Okay. So, it is higher heat uh, H value, this is lower H. So, that means energy to be taken up and this is lower H, this is higher H. So, energy will be released. Okay. So, that means reactant activated state then product and then the, the relative you know position in energy scale will determine whether the reaction will be exothermic or the reaction will be endothermic in nature. Now, let us uh, move on to one example that uh, uh, dissociation of H i okay, at two different temperatures. So, let us look into this, this process to H i giving rise to H 2 plus I 2 in gas phase. So, uh, rate constants are given to be 3 into 10 to the power minus 5, another is 2.5 into 10 to the power of minus 3, that is it is increasing at it, this is at 620 Kelvin and this is at 7 30 Kelvin. Remember that as you increase the temperature rate constant is increased like the, like that thumb rule that uh, for every 10 degree rise of temperature you know uh, the rate constant is increased by 2 to 3 times. Of course, that is for homogeneous uh, you know thermal reactions. And uh, given that delta H for this process, H for this process is 15 0.5 kilojoule mole inverse. Okay. So, uh, we have to find out the activation energy for forward and backward reactions. So, E act forward and also E act activation or E a whatever you say backward this is how much that we have to find out. Okay. So, uh, so how to do that? Now, first we have to use since we are means this rate constants are given for the forward processes. Okay. So, we have to make use of this Arrhenius equation to find out the activation energy of the forward process. And then with the help of that diagram that I already have shown that this is your activated state, activated state say this is your uh, forward activation energy. So, E A F C and say this is your backward reaction activation energy E A B and this much is your delta H. So, basically delta H is equal to E a forward minus E a backward. So, we have to make use of this uh, equation to find out this backward activation energy, I mean activation energy for the back reaction. So, let us first find out the forward activation energy. So, it is given like this that L n k 1 by k 2 or k 2 by k 1 is activation energy by 8.314 into 1 by 2 different temperatures one uh, this is your initial temperature this is your final temperature. Okay. So, upon calculation if you simplify then activation energy for the forward process will be coming out to be 185 kilojoule per mole. So, just ma making use of your uh, this uh, uh, Arrhenius equation you can find out the forward activation energy and then you use make use of this equation the delta H is equal to E activation forward minus E activation backward since you know E activation forward. So, backward activation I mean activation energy for the back process 
will be found from this one and this comes out to be this. So, backward activation energy is less. Okay. So, it is, it is an endothermic process, you see the sign is plus, it is an endothermic uh, process. Okay. So, uh, this way you can find out activation energy for the backward, I mean back reaction and the forward reaction provided you are given delta H of reaction. Next another uh, problem, prove that the that for an, for an nth order reaction, the plot of T half versus 1 upon T is a straight line and the slope of the line is equal to activation energy. Okay. So, we know uh, ln k versus 1 upon t, if we do a plot which is you know typical Arrhenius uh, using Arrhenius equation, then slope will be giving you activation energy, I mean E a by r. Okay. But here for an nth order reaction, you have to prove that ln t half versus 1 upon t is a straight line with slope uh, equal to E act. So, we have to start with uh, this one that ln k is equal to ln a minus E a by r t. This is your Arrhenius equation and t half for the nth order reaction is given by this. This is your initial concentration. Okay. So, this is uh, I, I already have talked about the expression for T half for any thought reaction of course, in this case n must not be equal to 1 that you have to remember. Okay. So, if you take logarithm that is uh, natural logarithm ln uh, both the sides then you will be getting this expression. Okay. Then what you have to do you have to plug in mean I mean you have to replace ln k by this ln k is equal to ln a minus e a by r t. So, you write this in place of ln k ln a plus e a by r t. So, this is a constant quantity you see the ln a is a constant as long as temperature is fixed and the reaction I mean you are talking about a particular reaction. So, this is a constant. So, you see that uh, ln t half is equal to e a by r t. So, uh, so slope basically e a by r. Okay. So, slope is nothing but from slope you will be getting E a. So, for a typical you know nth order reaction n is not equal to 1, you can prove that uh, that uh, T half versus 1 upon T will be giving you activation energy. Okay. So, this way you can uh, show this one and of course, this is a straight line because you see uh, ln T half is equal to constant plus E a by R T. So, T half versus 1 upon T is a straight line. Another example for a second order reaction, the reaction rate constant at 3 degree Celsius was found to be 8.9 into 10 to the power minus 3 liter mole inverse and uh, 7.1 into 10 to the power minus 2 liter mole inverse at 35 degree centigrade. So, find the activation energy. So, it is a straightforward, basically, we use uh, this expression ln k2 by k1 is E a by r into this one and uh, upon plug in the respective uh, numbers, you will be getting E a which is equal to 45.9 kilojoule mole inverse. Next, uh, so uh, what is the significance of temperature coefficient? So, temperature coefficient uh, significance means T, I mean K T plus 10 divided by K T which is equal to uh, you know 2 to 3 means as you increase the temperature reaction rate increases rate constant is getting raised from a particular value okay so that is the significance that is the typical signature of a chemical reaction that you if you increase the temperature your reaction rate is you know enhanced next is uh, energy of activation. What is energy of activation? Now, as I told you that in order to form an activated state, some energy is needed and next is why activated complex is needed? Because you need to cross a barrier, otherwise you cannot reach uh, your product state. 
if you are uh, you know in a reactant state say this is your reactant state say this is your product state you cannot directly move from here to here there is a there is a barrier like this you must cross it otherwise you cannot go directly okay so this barrier is called the activation barrier that you, you must cross so this is ea you must cross the barrier and this is a progress of reaction progress of reaction or may be called as a reaction coordinate so you must cross the barrier so this much of energy must be supplied from outside in order that the reactant is crossing can can cross the barrier okay so this much of energy must be supplied must be needed otherwise reaction will not will not take place arrhenius factor that is k is equal to a exponential minus ea by rt so this is your arrhenius factor it is also called as a as the frequency factor so this is called the arrhenius factor and uh, this is your exponential exponential term what is an activated complex activated complex is basically a state or activated state of the state which is here it is high in energy high in energy means either reactant and or product these two are lower in energy compared to this activated state okay so this is high in energy high in energy compared to reactant state or product state now this activated complex is formed in various ways it may for may be formed in various ways now the point is uh, according to latest uh, you know theories of reaction rates uh, which we will discuss uh, later time that suppose if it is a homogeneous gas phase reaction then you have got reactant say reactant a and say another reactant b so what is needed is that so a and b should come close to each other okay otherwise suppose suppose there there is a uh, there, there is required a, an atom transfer from say a to b to give your product b so that means they must be close to each other or they must be in vicinity of each other so that this atom transfer can take place that means only possibility in gas phase is that if there is a collision then they can come close to each other so basically by means of collision they can form a momentary complex which may be regarded as an activated complex then this activated complex one it is once it is formed then it has got the option either it can go in this direction which which explains the back reaction or maybe it can go i mean it can cross the barrier in the and go to the right hand side which explains the product formation this explains your again back reaction okay so that means uh, this activated complex formation is a, is a, is a very important thing and uh, it needs to be further you know discussed so we will discuss this point later on means what is activated complex how does it look and uh, what are the factors that you know you know that can affect the relative energy state of this activated complex that we will discuss and what is the effect of temperature and how temperature you know alters this activated complex formation whether it is expediting or something else we'll talk about maybe later time okay so a plus b producing product so it is a simple gas phase reaction it is a kind of collision okay so it is a collision reaction maybe a reaction um, uh, all reactions are not gas phase reaction so in solution phase something else may happen next is uh, uh, we must uh, talk a little about uh, catalyst what is a catalyst now because since i started to talk about you know although in 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 brief but i started to talk about this activated complex and a possible geometry of the activated complex possible geometry maybe say um, maybe uh, by means of a hydrogen bond formation say we have got one entity and there is a hydrogen which is you know just uh, projected out and there is another entity suppose there is a you know nitrogen so in the gas phase there is a possibility 
of say you know hydrogen bond formation. So, this hydrogen bonded complex sometime can be an activated complex and then later on after you know you know after if, if we give more time then this hydrogen will maybe get get uh, maybe transferred from here to here producing uh, you know your product. So, that will come later on, but the thing is uh, there is a there is a definitive role of catalyst in in you know speeding up the reaction. Okay. Now, what is the catalyst? Catalyst is a substance that increases the rate of a chemical reaction without itself being destroyed or used up. In this particular uh, discussion, we are not taking up catalyst in detail, but you know basic understanding what does a catalyst do for a chemical reaction, we just try to understand that. Okay. So, you know you have this Arrhenius equation k is equal to a exponential minus e a by r t, where e a is the activation energy and this is your absolute temperature and so a plus b producing c plus d. So, this is your activation energy e a. Suppose and E a. So, if E a is more the barrier crossing rate will be less. So, as I told you in earlier lecture that if activation energy is more then reaction is generally slowed down. I mean slow reaction it is a result result is a slow reaction although temperature effect is more, but it is a slow reaction when activation energy is less then reaction is is fast. So, uh, suppose by uh, a, a specific means or by some means if we can reduce if we can reduce this E a maybe by introduction of a third component in the reaction mixture or maybe by some other means maybe if we raise the energy state by some means or maybe if we re reduce the activated state by some means then this separation will be reduced this separation will be reduced. So, if this separation will be reduced then possibility of barrier crossing from here to here producing your product that is the progress of reaction will be more. Okay. That means, lowering of activation energy will lead to an increase in rate constant. Okay. So, so, if this is an uncatalyzed reaction and suppose in presence of catalyst if this happens like your activation energy is reduced, then your rate will be further increased. Okay. So, then what is the role of a catalyst? So, basically catalyst provides an alternative path that demands lesser activation energy. You see this is a path, this is also a path producing a plus b to c plus d giving from a plus b to c plus d. Uh, but it is an alternative path. Why I am saying alternative path? Because it demands less of activation energy E a primed, where E a primed is less than E a. So, it offers an alternate path with less of activation energy. Okay. So, that means, rate of a catalyzed reaction will be more than the same reaction when it is under not catalyzed condition, uncatalyzed condition. So, in that case E a catalyzed is less than E a uncatalyzed. Next is uh, you see here this is the energy level diagram. So, activation energy is you know this is x y E a x y x to y and this is activation energy for E a y to x. Okay. So, you see that the black one the black line so, it, it is having higher activation energy you see E a x to y it is the normal reaction uncatalyzed higher activation energy and also for the backward process it is higher. Okay. This one is higher, okay. but the red one is the catalyzed one in presence of catalyst you see the forward activation energy E a primed x y you may call this as E a primed x y or E a catalyzed x y it is less and also E a catalyzed y x it is also less. So, you see that in both the direction for both the direction I mean, I mean forward or backward in both the direction you know your 
activation energy is reduced. That means lower activation energy means your faster reaction. So, faster in both the direction. Okay. Faster in both the direction means equilibrium is reached quickly compared to uncatalyzed reaction. Although you see delta H, H for the process is not altered, but only thing is that it provides that is catalyst provides an alternative path demanding less activation energy for both the direct both the direction. Okay. So, that is why catalyzed reactions are you know are you know faster. Okay, because it demands less activation energy and this is a reaction path in this direction. Okay. So, in, in heterogeneous catalysis, you know heterogeneous catalysis, catalyst can be homogeneous, catalyst can be heterogeneous. So, in homogeneous case, in homogeneous case you know catalyst and your reactant both are in single phase or same phase. And in heterogeneous catalysis what is happening that the reactant and the catalyst are in different phases, maybe one is in liquid phase, another is in solid phase or maybe one is in solid phase, another is in gas phase. So, typical example is Hayward synthesis of ammonia, okay. N2 plus 3 H2 is equal to 2 NH3, it is an Heber, a Heber synthesis of ammonia. So, uh, here the catalysis occurs you know in a, in, a, in a heterogeneous fashion. Also Oswald process of production of nitric acid, here also you know this is an, is a, this is an example of heterogeneous catalysis. Homogeneous catalysis there is in this case reactant and catalyst are in dispersed are dispersed in single phase usually liquid and typical example is acid based catalysis like say ester hydrolysis say ester producing acid plus alcohol. It may be catalyst by H plus or OH minus. So, maybe you add a little amount of say HCl or maybe a little amount of NaOH. So, ester will be organic ester will be hydrolyzed to produce acid and alcohol. Of course, in presence of OH minus acid will be corresponding salt. So, it is a case of homogeneous catalysis. Okay. So, if you add you do not add H plus or OH minus the reaction happens, but it, it is a very slow reaction. Okay. Now, enzyme catalysis is another example it is a, it is a biological catalysis. Okay. I talked about heterogeneous catalysis or homogeneous catalysis all these are all these are you know non biological processes, but for biological cases you know it has got a different name which is called the enzyme catalysis. Enzymes are small you know proteins or uh, you know polypeptides. So, they tend to form a complex like which is called the enzyme substrate complex okay, with the substrate and then this substrate will proceed and proceed to you know this enzyme substrate complex will proceed towards the forward direction giving rise to the product. And then what happens this enzyme is revert I mean retained back. Okay. So, it is it is a typical you know biological catalysis. So, this biological catalysis uh, part will be taken up in appropriate uh, section I mean appropriate uh, lecture. So, let us uh, have a look at uh, you know this Heber ammonia synthesis uh, uh, synthesis. So, it happens you know normally since nitrogen is having a triple bond N plus H 2. So, this is very unreactive you know we have plenty of nitrogen in atmosphere, but they are not reactive. And uh, this nitrogen, so unreactive nitrogen undergoes this reaction N2 plus 3 H2 producing 2 NH3 ammonia production. And it requires, it requires you know catalyst iron catalyst and uh, in presence of uh, these, these are called uh, you know promoters. So, in presence of promoter iron catalyst and of course, it is a huge temperature 450 degree centigrade and about 200 atmospheric pressure 
So, it is a very high pressure and of course, high temperature. So, at elevated temperature and pressure condition, what is happening that this nitrogen, hydrogen combines to form 2 NH3. So, this iron in K2O, calcium oxide and Al2O3, these are in solid phase okay? and at a, at a very high temperature and of course, this nitrogen and hydrogen, they are reacted at a high temper, high pressure, high atmosphere, I mean uh, external pressure is very high. Okay? So, it is a case of heterogeneous catalyst, catalysis. Okay? Because high temp, if you do not put you know uh, these conditions, then the reaction does not occur. And this has got a tremendous industrial application that uh, just you have got this nitrogen, enormous amount of nitrogen you can you can get from atmosphere, there is no virtually no you know um, expenditure, just you have to supply hydrogen and then this is regenerated. Since it is a catalyst, it is regenerated. Okay. So, it is regenerated means recycled. After one complete cycle, it is recycled back to your uh, reaction chamber and then again this process occurs to give you ammonia. So, uh, and uh, in presence of this catalyst, you know this reaction at this temperature pressure condition, it is it, it, it gets facilitated. So, catalyst has got an immense role in industrial you know preparation. There is another example Oswald process uh, for the preparation of uh, nitric acid. So, it, it, it is at uh, 900 degree centigrade and pressure is 4 to 10 atmosphere, it is also a bit uh, high, high pressure. Okay. So, in presence of platinum ro rhodium catalyst, this ammonia combines with oxygen to produce NO nitric oxide. The nitric oxide again in presence of oxygen produces nitrogen dioxide. The nitrogen dioxide reacts with, I mean dissolves in water to produce HNO2 and HNO3. Okay? So, equated form of your nitric acid and then uh, this nitric acid is further you know processed to, to give you the uh, further process to get, get you nitric acid this HNO3 equals because it is a dilute situation. So, you have to concentrate it. So, you see that 900 degree centigrade 4 to 10 atmosphere in presence of platinum rhodium catalyst. If you do not give it, again it is a problem, you do not uh, get this one. So, this in presence of catalyst, this reaction um, uh, means under this condition, this reaction occurs to produce nitric oxide and, and uh, further reactions. So, catalyst catalysts um, are having uh, tremendous importance in chemical processes. Now, next is uh, let us have a very uh, you know uh, simplistic description of enzyme catalysis. So, enzyme is a is a uh, you know macromolecule like this and it has got certain you know pockets. Okay? And in this pocket the substrate okay, substrate forms, say this is your enzyme, say this is your substrate. So, it binds to produce an enzyme substrate complex, ES complex. Normally, substrate giving rise to product. So, it requires you know maybe like this, this, this much of energy of activation, but the moment enzyme comes into picture then maybe say this is your enzyme substrate complex, then enzyme substrate complex maybe with is, it is giving rise to like this. Okay. So, enzyme substrate complex then another state may be is there after enzyme substrate it is further you know and converted to another uh, species and then it gives rise to a product. Okay. So, why this is like this, I will I'll com come to uh, that point later on, but I am just trying to give, him, uh, give you some idea. So, you see this much of gain in activation energy. So, activation energy has been reduced this much, therefore, the reaction is faster. And also another important point is that, that enzyme catalyzed reaction has got you know some, if you plot rate 
versus temperature, you will be seeing that it has got some optimum temperature. Okay. Below this temperature, this process is not very much facile and also above this temperature, when temperature is high, this is also reduced because of the fact that this biomolecules, these are very temperature sensitive. So, at an elevated temperature, you know, they are specific structure which is responsible for such enzyme substrate complexation is lost because of high temperature or increase of temperature. This you know coiled structure because protein has got coiled structure in, in a you know three dimensional sense it has got a coiled structure. Okay. So, it is it has got a folded structure it is a long uh, um, you know polymeric uh, system I mean it has got amino acid residue many amino acid residues and they form you know a coiled structure or maybe uh, it is a folded structure. So, if you increase the temperature maybe this portion the active site which is called the active site is misfolded or maybe unfolded. So, that this enzyme substrate complexation is no longer facile and as a result of which this lowering in, in enzyme substrate uh, you know uh, I mean this activation energy is not there and as a result of which the reaction you know rate is reduced. So, enzyme substrate reaction is a special case of uh, special case where uh, where, where, where it is also called as uh, biocatalysis. So, I will talk to this biocatalysis in uh, more detail maybe in, in appropriate class, but I uh, just have uh, given you an idea what is this, what is this biocatalysis. So, basically the role of you know this enzyme is that it is regenerated you know. So, enzyme then plus substrate producing enzyme substrate complex, then it is producing product plus enzyme back. Then again this enzyme is recycled, I mean then again E again next substrate molecule producing the same thing. Okay. So, it is recycled, okay. the small molecule small you know maybe it is a typical maybe 100 to 100 or maybe 50 amino acid residue containing protein molecule. So, it will be uh, regenerated after the reaction. Okay, so, uh, uh, this is uh, enzyme substrate uh, I mean enzyme catalyzed reaction and uh, I just told you this uh, heterogeneous catalysis and also I gave you the idea of uh, this homogeneous catalysis and homogeneous catalysis has, uh, has some, uh, uh, some more features which uh, uh, I will talk about like features means say if you have uh, See, suppose, suppose you have got um, hydrolysis reaction, acid catalyst catalyzed hydrolysis reaction that is your ester producing your uh, acid plus alcohol. Okay. So, rate will be suppose it is if it is a first order reaction then rate is equal to k into k into your concentration of ester and of course, C H plus is there. C H plus is there means you know if hydrogen ion concentration is double then your rate is double it is a simple one to one correspondence. So, basically this C H plus including this is producing giving you k C H plus into ester. So, if you increase your CH plus concentration to double, then your rate will be doubled. So, if you you know just uh, uh, divide the old rate with the new rate, then you can find out the how many fold you have, uh, how many fold uh, increase of H plus has been made. So, this is basically called your CH plus is called the you know catalytic coefficient. Okay, so, there is a one to one correspondence between this. So, that is why it is called the homogeneous catalysis that is if you increase your catalyst concentration uh, by a factor of 2, your rate will be increased by a factor of 2. Okay, so, and this part I may be in, in, a, in a separate lecture where I will talk about this catalysis. So, these, these uh, um, aspects will be, will be taken up. Okay, so, uh, what we have learned in this uh, concluding section of uh, effect of temperature on 
chemical uh, reaction that that uh, this the, who was the for, uh, person in 1870 gave the idea that uh, that LNK has got an inverse temperature dependence. Okay, so that is LNK is equal to A minus B by T, and from that, using the idea of went of uh, Arrhenius uh, put forward this his famous equation. Okay, and uh, the his his famous equation uh, from his famous equation, I mean Arrhenius's equation, we can find out the activation energy uh, for the for the chemical reaction by doing some temperature variation experiment. I already talked about it in in last class that how to do you know this how to find out activation energy. That is, you have to carry out the reaction at different temperatures maybe at three different temperatures okay and then uh, in these three different temperatures you find out rate constant okay you find out the rate constant and then plot logarithm of that found rate constant as a function of 1 upon t and from slope and intercept you find out the respective quantities like e uh, activation that is activation energy and uh, you know frequency factor uh, and we have done a number of you know uh, certain uh, examples and then we also have talked about the um, significance of temperature coefficient energy of activation which is very important parameter which is a very important factor arrhenius factor and also the what is uh, you know grossly meant by the term activated complex activated complex means it is basically an activated state and it is a it is a kind of complex formation in the activation activated state that is it a higher energy state and that higher energy state will eventually uh, be transformed to either the product side or maybe the, the to the reactant side. So, if it, it is uh, crossing the barrier in and go it, if it goes to the right hand side means a product formation and if it comes back means it is you know back reaction that is I uh, talked about uh, you know reversible reaction. So, it, it explains reversibility also. Then um, I give you uh, a uh, very short interaction of uh, catalyst. What is a catalyst? That catalyst is, is, a, is a substance which provides an alternate path that is uh, the path which demands uh, lower activation energy or you can say that it lowers the activation energy by providing an alternate path and uh, also we discussed uh, you know with two examples one is Heber synthesis of ammonia where it is a, it is a, a these are the example of uh, heterogeneous catalysis that is catalyst is in a different phase than your reactant and product and uh, homogeneous catalysis we also talked about that is you know catalyst reactants and products all these are in the same phase single phase that is why it is called the homogeneous catalysis. We also uh, give a very brief introduction of enzyme catalysis which is nothing but a bio catalysis okay. and uh, so in the next class what uh, should we take up let us again go back to the maybe to the first slide. Uh, that uh, will move on to complex reaction. We just uh, started with uh, this back reaction may be parallel reaction, but we have not given a complete account of them. So, in the next class, in the next lecture, we will talk on complex reactions, where we will you know take up this uh, parallel reaction, sequential reaction, reversible reaction and uh, many other aspects. So, till then have nice time, thank you.